Hello, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you're a recurring visitor, thank you so much for returning. I really appreciate you all being here. Um, today, I just want to share a few thoughts on a recent read, which was In the Heart of the Sea, The Tragedy of the Whaleship Essex by Nathaniel Philbrick. I finished reading this one about three days ago, and it took me about two days to read. I was honestly completely enthralled by it. I could not put it down. It was an incredible page turner for me. Uh, this is the first of Nathaniel Philbrick's books uh, that I have read. I own his book on Bunker Hill and Mayflower, but I have not read either of those. And so this was a great introduction to me or for me to his writing style, which I absolutely love. I get along really well with it. Um, so in the heart of the sea, the main event which is being covered is the sinking of of the Essex, which was a Nantucket whale ship, which was rammed and sunk by a sperm whale about 2,000 nautical miles off the coast of South America. Um, so basically the middle of the um, southern, southern Pacific Ocean in the 1820s. The book opens with a really nice introduction to the history of the island of Nantucket, as well as the history of whaling and whaling on Nantucket to really set the stage. And then the second half of the book is the recounting of the sinking of the Essex and then the survival of the 20-man crew. The first hand sources that were used most heavily uh, were from the 14-year-old cabin boy, Thomas uh, Nickerson, who kept an immaculate journal travel log through the entire 90-day uh, castaway tragedy, essentially. He um, journaled almost every single day, and then it was lost until the 1960s when it was found um, uh, you know, stored away in, in a bin somewhere in Nantucket. And then it wasn't printed until 1984. So this is one of the first books to cover the Essex uh, tragedy that uses this new first-hand documentation which was found. And so there's a lot of those journal snippets, log snippets put throughout the book, which give a really great sense of, uh, you know, of, of the experience that was had by the crew as a whole. The actual retelling of the survival of the 20-man crew of the Essex is quite harrowing, incredibly oh, horrific and grueling. Essentially 20 men stranded with only three whale boats which are 20 foot long, 6 foot wide rowboats essentially. Very little food, very little by way of tools or navigational equipment they had a couple of maps they had a little bit of food but nothing not not enough of anything to survive and so they resort to extreme lengths they go as far as to resort to cannibalism of the crew members who perish and then when that falters in their survival they end up pulling lots to see which member of crew will be killed next to be used as food for the remaining crewmen alive. And so there are lots of moments like that that are incredibly grueling, incredibly horrific to read about, especially through the eyes of a 14-year-old cabin boy, um, Thomas Nickerson. This was his first whaling expedition. And so he was completely new to the idea or new to the experience of whaling. And then obviously everything went wrong. And so he's experiencing all of this for the first time as, as is the entire crew, but the crew other than him has experience at least of whaling. And so reading his firsthand accounts are incredibly eye-opening and insightful to the sheer s survival animal instinct that had to kick in with these men in order for them to survive. The second half of the book then recounts the more than 90 days that the men were castaways in the open ocean, recounting several times that they did land on deserted islands, the food that they were able to pr procure, essentially their, their struggle with survival um, until eventually the eight surviving members of the original 20 are rescued and picked up by a British whaling ship and eventually make their way back to Nantucket. So it's an incredibly harrowing story. Um, a lot of 
great detail is given to whaling, to the industry of whaling, the history of whaling, which was really eye-opening to me. Um, another big part of this book is the emphasis put on the fact that the sinking of the Essex was the main inspiration that led Herman Melville to write Moby Dick, which is a novel that I still need to read. It's one of those that has always been on my list and I have never read it and I have no excuse to not have read it by now. And so I'm hoping to read it either in February or in March of this year. Um, but there, so there's a lot of tie-in to Herman Melville's writing and some of the research that he did into the sinking of the Essex as well, which was very interesting to read about. Um, as well, just learning a lot about Nantucket and life on the island for the women and children who were left behind when the men would go whaling. These whaling expeditions would last sometimes as long as five years, uh, which is absolutely insane to me. I did not realize that they would be out in the open water for that long on these expeditions, um, bringing back, you know, hundreds and hundreds of gallons of, of whale oil, which would then be exported at exorbitant prices. Um, it, was, it was such a lucrative industry that they would, you know, outfit these ships to last as long as possible out in the open water to get as many whales as possible uh, per ship, which I found very interesting. Um, there, it, it is quite a graphic book, especially when it comes to the actual whaling aspect of the book. Uh, Nathaniel Philbrick does not hold back on describing the process of whaling and of the procurement of the whale oil. So I would warn anyone who is sensitive to animal endangerment, this is definitely not going to be a pleasant read. Um, and then on into the second half of the book, obviously with the um, stranded 20-man crew resorting to cannibalism and uh, severe sun exposure. There's quite a few graphic passages in that portion of the book as well. So I would just want to put both of those warnings out. However, if both of those things um, are, are okay for you to read and you have an interest in learning more about whaling, if you want to learn more about sort of the maritime experience of a sailor in the mid 19th century, I would absolutely recommend In the Heart of the Sea by Nathaniel Philbrick. I enjoyed it incredibly. I'm very excited to move on to his other books now. Um, he is an incredibly accessible writer. His writing style is very uh, to the point, uh, but still with uh, a, a delicate hand as well. So it's very enjoyable. It's very entertaining. It's very easy to read. Um, I would absolutely recommend it to anyone who finds this topic interesting. Uh, so those are just some of my thoughts on In the Heart of the Sea by Nathaniel Philbrick. I guess I should point out, I read it um, on my Kindle. I read it, uh, the ebook version. Um, so I don't have a, I don't have a physical copy, but I do want to get one to add it to my library. It's one of those that I do see myself going back and reading again. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, feel free to leave a comment down below if you would like, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now and happy reading.